Texas Congressman Mark VC, a Democratic member of the House Energy and Commerce and Armed Services Committee. Welcome back to the broadcast. Good to see you, sir. Um, tell me, what does the Pentagon and our intelligence community in general need to do to ensure this cannot happen again? Which begs the question, is that even possible? Yeah, that's something that we need to look at very closely on the House Armed Services Committee. Uh, you know, uh, these documents, you know, are they're all online, just like everything is these days. And obviously, the Pentagon wants to be able to have a certain level of efficiency, being able to share uh, these documents uh, from for, for with certain key individuals. And we really need to look at uh, whether or not uh, so many people need to have as much access uh, to these documents. I know it's going to be something that we're definitely going to discuss on the committee when we get back uh, tomorrow. Uh, but this needs to be taken serious. I mean, the fact that this, you know, 21 year old who was an airman uh, had access to such sensitive documents that not only put our allies at risk, but ultimately uh, could put all of us at risk uh, here in the United States is absolutely uh, dangerous and should be sobering to everyone. Yeah, it is. And you can also take it one step further, sir, because members of the online group where to share are posted the information shared video with The Washington Post showing to share shouting racist and anti-Semitic slurs before firing a rifle. An anonymous member of the group also said this about to Here it is. OG was not hostile to the U.S. government. However, he had disagreed with several occasions such as Waco and Ruby Ridge and thought that the government is overreaching in several aspects. So we don't yet know motive behind this leak, but does it raise alarms that greater emphasis should be put on examining potential extremism within our armed forces? Yeah, we absolutely have to. You know, that's something that we talked about during January the 6th, and we had some governors that sort of wanted to push back on that and say that they weren't going to let, uh, you know, National Guardsmen from their state participate uh, if we were going to look at that, but obviously it, it's an issue. I think the other thing that we need to remind everyone of too is just because you don't agree with something that the government is doing, you don't put everyone else at risk and put our national sovereignty at risk by leaking classified documents. That's not a peaceful way uh, to protest and express your uh, disapproval of something. And I think the third thing that should really be troubling to everyone is the fact that you had a key member of Kevin McCarthy's leadership team, a reckless, radical Republican, and Marjorie Taylor Greene, that made anti-Semitic comments. This is her second time uh, 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 defending someone or being tied to anti-Semitic comments. The, the comments that Texera made were absolutely uh, um, you know, nuts. And the fact that she would go on her Twitter um, uh, handle and call this man a hero and say that he's only being attacked because he's white begs the question, you know, Kevin McCarthy, why is this nutcase on your team? Why does she have access to national security documents? Uh, and, and, and what is it and what sort of value does she bring to the Republican Party? This is, hmm. this is, this is unprecedented. It's crazy. And if a Democrat had said something like that, after someone made anti-Semitic comments, people would be going absolutely bonkers over it. Hmm. And she, say, she said this, after this guy has clearly made anti-Jewish comments and no one on the Republican side is saying anything about it. Uh, yeah. It's crazy and it doesn't make any sense. Well, I think you should also have those questions posed to the constituents whom she represents who elect her to office. But let's move on, sir, because several Republican presidential hopefuls appearing at the annual NRA conference. It comes as a new study finds nearly one in five adults have been personally threatened with a gun and about as many adults have had a family member killed by a gun. Does it surprise you the relationship Republicans still want to have with the NRA despite the growing frequency of mass shootings? We started this hour talking about two within a five hour span last night. Does not surprise me at all. You know, I'm right here in, in Texas and no mini gun owners. I'm a gun owner myself. And uh, no, it, it's no surprise uh, within the re radical, reckless Republican primary. If you're for if you're not for anything goes and if you're not for being against even reasonable restrictions, you cannot get elected in the Republican primary uh, through crazy gerrymandering and extreme policy positions. The Republicans have really created uh, this problem uh, for themselves. They're completely out of line with 
most of the American public when it comes to, you know, things like common sense measures, like uh, expanded background checks and making sure that guns that are sold to uh, individuals, that there's a background check done, making sure that if someone uh, under the age of uh, 21 wants to go and buy an AR-15, that they can't do it. Reasonable things that most people, even Republicans agree with, we cannot get passed in the United States uh, Congress uh, because the Republicans would rather be beholden to the NRA. And again, a very extreme small amount of the American public that votes in their primaries. It, it's scary and it just shows that we have to do something about uh, crazy gerrymandering. So the general election means a lot more than it does uh, than the primaries. There's way too much emphasis on primaries in our countries these days. And it's dangerous and it's actually trickled up uh, to the Senate and it's scary. Yeah. Texas Congressman Mark Vesey, thank you so much for your time on the show. Appreciate it. Mean